I have a unique experience of going through a school system in three different countries, Nepal, England and America. Hard work, dedication and utilizing the opportunities and with some stroke of luck along the path had been instrumental in shaping my journey so far. Hi everyone, I am Vivek. Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of my weekly podcast where I invite some common people who share the immense expertise in different fields. Today we have Vivek Bosnet, whose prospective major is Economics and Mathematics in Yale University, New Haven, Connecticut. Having studied at Brunel Gandhi School, Nepal, and then studying in Sussex uh, Coast College in the UK with a Pestalozzi scholarship to complete his international baccalaureate degree and then currently pursuing his bachelor's degree in one of the prestigious Ivy League universities in the USA. He has gained enormous experiences enough to analyze the teaching methods in three different countries. So let me introduce Vivek to the podcast who is speaking from Connecticut. Welcome Vivek to the show. Uh, thank you, Manasri, for inviting me. It's a great, great uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Vivek. Uh, can you walk us through your academic life from a child to the present moment? Yeah, sure. Uh, I attended my primary education in Khotang, Sapatel. That, that is the place where I was born and raised. Uh, after getting a scholarship to Brian Gunter School, I attended Budayanganta from grade 4 onwards, uh, having the exposure to diverse group of people, immense resources and great teachers, um, it helped me to realize that life has, life has more flavor to it uh, and it has more to offer to me. So my experience at Budayanganta was, was great, I, I love every, every moment of my time there, uh, after receiving Pestalozzi scholarship. I went to UK to do international baccalaureate diploma for two years um, and living with students from different countries, especially from developing countries as a very close-knit community was was a very unique experience. Um, currently I'm a, I'm a freshman here at Yale of Perspective Economics and Math major. So it's quite a fit that you have studied at three most prestigious schools and universities in three separate countries. And so how does it feel to make such an accomplishment? Uh, first, I must thank the people who have supported me in my journey, uh, right, starting from Sapatel to Buranian Kanta, Pestalozzi, Hotskis, and right now here at Yale. Um, it, it wouldn't have been possible without the help and support of some or some great people that I met along, along my path. Uh, now talking about, uh, let me focus more about the experience here at Yale. Um, I must admit that it's an insane amount of work every day. Uh, normally I go to bed at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. If I'm lucky, maybe 1.30, wake up at 8 in the morning. So it's a lot of work. And you re when you are in the classroom, you realize that people are brilliant. Um, most of the classrooms, for me, I'm below the average in classrooms and, and for most of the students that is difficult to cope with because those people who are here, they were the toppers in their high schools, uh, in their uh, previous schools. So you have to, everybody cannot be first here. So uh, that, that is a difficult situation to cope with. But then um, getting exposed to new, and getting exposed to those brilliant students from different parts of the world um, help you to learn new things, something new every day. Uh, you make friends with a diverse group of people from all over the world and the perspective and passion, they are very different from yours and you challenge your limits, you, you go a step further to understand their culture, to understand wh where their views come from and th that, that is a great experience to learn. 
suddenly you did touch on some symptoms of the imposter syndrome there now uh, since you spent most of your life studying in nepal what major differences did you find between the teaching methods of nepal and the other two countries um th- let me start with this, some obvious differences about the class sizes uh, here there, there is a good variation in class sizes for example i do chinese and there are only six students here but in my math class there are 200 students so you see that variation and it depends upon the which type of classes you do but then when you do small classes around 10 20 people then the the teaching learning process is more focused in the students unlike in nepal it is where teachers give lectures teachers who talk and students will listen but here teachers they tend to um they tend to uh, act like and fas- like a facilitator to uh, for the discussions that happen in the classrooms. It is the students who discuss with other students. It is students who argue with other students, and teachers is just they try to get the discussion going. And I think um, that would help. That helps a lot to develop confidence in the students. And we see people here in, um, in uh, United States and in the UK, they are much more confident from right from the childhood because I think a lot has to do with the education system here. Uh, I remember back in Buddha Inkanda school, after spending a couple of years, I could hardly stand in the classroom and you know, speak com- comfortably uh, whatever I wanted to say because I was so used to listening. I was never used to talking in front of the crowd uh, and uh, giving that platform to students in the classroom to discuss and a great way to produce leaders, to um, encourage students to think outside the boundary and challenge what they're used to. I certainly agree that Nepal has a banking concept of education as opposed to the problem solving education. A concept that was, uh, you know, proposed by Paulo Freire in the 20th century. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I agree with yeah. you. Now, why, where exactly should the policymakers in Nepal focus to parallel their teaching methods to those of the foreign countries? <laughs> okay, I'm not an expert in this, but based upon my experiences that I have had so far, I think a lot of things, uh, the, it's more of a repetition in what, what I said in my previous question. Um, that, yeah, we certainly need and uh, developing in, in infrastructures and the teaching learning program for the students. And there's a big gap uh, in education in urban area and rural area. Um, I, I see that I, in the private schools, in, especially in Kathmandu, I think they are doing a good job. But if we look at the public schools in the rural areas, once the teachers get into their role as teachers after passing Lok Seva Ayob, they are there for the next 30 to 40 years. and. And they think that that's the end, you know. You have to improve and you have to, even teaching is a continuous learning process. You, you have to read more books, you have to be familiarized with, with the new concepts of what's going on around the world, uh, reading new materials, new novels. I think that is part of, that should be part of the teaching learning process and having the training of how to deal with psychological pressure for the, uh, for the students, having to deal, uh, and that sort of training program, timely training program for the teacher is important too, and and uh, and shifting the focus from student from teachers to students is also important part in teaching learning process. So that students they develop confidence to speak in front of the crowd, they develop that confidence that is very vital today to you know make themselves established in society and maybe speak against the inequalities, speak against of uh, social violence, family violence, and that, that will help students go a long path. Imagine a scenario where you are going to teach social sciences to grade 6 students. Based on your experiences, how will your teaching methods vary from the conventional methods adopted by the previous generation of teachers in Nepal? Um, do not take me wrong here, but I do, by any means, I do not want to criticize my teachers. I have all respect to them. But I think um, giving, organizing students to, into small groups and asking them to 
discuss about these situations on whatever they know rather than imposing my ideas. Uh, I know very great situations they might not have the good uh, you know, ideas about the concepts, but then like giving them you know, a couple of minutes to play with the idea and whatever they know and asking them to present in the class. At least that I think that would that would help the students to know each other better, but at the same time to put forward their argument in more succinct way. Now, what do you, what advice do you want to give to the prospective listeners who want to excel in their academics, just like you have done in your life? Um. For me, it has been a great mix of different things. I think my life till now, it has worked pretty well for me. And I wouldn't have imagined being here at Yale today, maybe 10 years ago, even two years ago. But then it's I, certainly hard work will take you far. But then being aware of the environment, being taking best out of the opportunities that are available to you, it's vital in succeeding in any environment that you are. Um, I would also like to say that do not be afraid to reach out for help um, and take advantage of the resources. And one thing that that is fundamental to my philosophy is I do not take any resource or any opportunity that I get as an end product. And, uh, for example, getting into Yale or getting into Pestalozzi, Hoskies, Burangata, that getting into those institutions in itself isn't is the biggest accomplishment but what you do after that it's like i always take this opportunities as a stop, stepping stone to go a step further so i encourage everybody to do that not to relax once you are into into certain institutions or certain place or once your dreams are achieved like dream higher go further yeah that was an excellent insight into the teaching methods that you experienced in three different countries as well as sharing your you know knowledge or different methods to teach as well as inspiring others about you know in their academics so even uh, as someone who is studying in the us i have to emphasize talking about nepal's average teaching methods and coming up with different ideas to improvise them Sure, there have been uh, different organizations in Nepal and even outside Nepal that are, you know, doing something to create a new generation of highly improvised learning methods in Nepal. Thank you, Vivek, for making time to talk in my podcast. Uh, thank you, Marasve, for inviting me here today. It was great talking to you. So... I want to thank all the listeners who tune in to the show and request them to start the discussion to improve Nepal's teaching methods through various platforms. Please subscribe to my channel and request others to listen to it. Also, do give me constructive feedback regarding the show so that the next show will be even more great. So I'll be back for the next episode next week. Until then, sayonara.